We've all thought about it, we've all feared it, and in some cases, a few of us have experienced it. Every day all over the world, another missing person report is filed. Whether it be a loved one who cannot be contacted, or a sudden disappearance of a co-worker. Regardless, the fact that human beings, just like us, can vanish in the blink of an eye is incredibly terrifying. And despite modern technology, some people are just never found. Before we start the list, remember that these are humans with friends and families who are still desperately clinging to hope that one day they can be found. So if you know anything at all about any of these cases, even the smallest bit of information, then please speak up. Here are five of the strangest modern day missing person cases around the world. The Disappearance of Sombath Somphone for over 20 years, Sombath Somfoam was a respected international figure, helping create new methods of sustainable farming and agricultural practices, while teaching students about the importance of eco-friendly living. Since he returned to Lao People's Democratic Republic after the end of the Vietnam War, Somfoam had received numerous awards and distinctions for his work to improve the quality of life, not just in Laos, but around the world. Not only that, but he managed to stay out of politics throughout his career in community development, appealing to wide audiences regardless of political affiliation. A rare feat for someone so global, and a major reason why his mysterious disappearance makes such little sense. On the evening of December the 15th, 2012, Somfone was driving his jeep through the Vientiane, Laos, when he was pulled over on the side of a highway by police. The police approach his vehicle and talk for a few moments. Somfone then exits his jeep and joins the officers. A few seconds pass before a man in black arrives on a motorcycle and rushes to team up with the police. The man in black then gets in the jeep and drives away. Not long after, a man in white appears and waits at the scene. A pickup truck arrives and the man in white hops in along with two other people, including Somfone. Another motorcyclist behind the outpost appears and talks to police before seemingly firing a few rounds of ammunition. The truck then leaves while police check the abandoned motorcycle. The man in white comes back and drags it out of the frame, clearing the scene. It was the last time Somfone would ever be seen again. Soon after the CCTV footage was captured, the government swiftly denied any responsibility in the kidnapping of Sombath Somfone. However, most prominent governing officials of international countries weren't convinced. Many global facticians pushed officials to contribute as many resources as possible to find Somfone, but urgent action was never carried out. Even prominent American politicians such as Hillary Clinton and John Kerry voiced their concern for the well-being of Somfone and their anger at the lack of resources spent in the search. Because the CCTV footage was never officially made public, no detailed investigation into the video have been announced. All we can do is speculate why the police were so interested in Somfone, or if they were truly police at all. The man in black and the man in white also add a bizarre twist, as their actions seem quite calculated and planned out. Somfone was a simple man who did only good for his community and nation. He had zero reasons to fear for his life, made no enemies, and worked to sustain peace. The only reasonable explanation is the people who kidnapped Somfone were agents of chaos devoted to removing a symbol of good that was Sombath Somfone. Let's hope that one day the Leo government will commit a proper investigation to uncover the truth. The Disappearance of Corey McKeague In the early morning hours of September the 24th, 2016, Royal Air Force Regiment gunner Corey McKeague went out drinking with some friends in Bury Street, Edwards, UK. He drove into town with the intention of leaving his car overnight and ended up in the Flex nightclub, which he was seen leaving alone sometime after midnight. The doorman of the club claimed he asked Corey to leave due to how drunk he was, and Corey left without issue. From there, he wandered to Mamma Mia's restaurant, his well-known favourite takeout. He was seen sometime between 1.15 and 1.30am. It would be about two hours later, at 3.25am, that Corey was captured on CCTV footage walking down Brent Govel Street into the Horseshoe area. He was alone, and police concluded that he had been sleeping in the doorway of an unidentified establishment before awakening and wandering off. This would sadly become the last time anyone saw Corey. 
Authorities believe that he had no intentions of walking the 10 miles back to the RAF Honington base where he lived. However, Corey's friends did mention that it was common for Corey to drive into town, grab some food, and sleep wherever he could on weekends. Corey was reported missing on Monday, September the 26th, when he failed to report for work. Police established that Corey's mobile phone had traveled along the A1101 corridor up north to Barton Mills the morning of his disappearance. The trip only took 28 minutes, meaning Corey couldn't have made it while walking. Investigators drove up and down the road where a bin lorry had made its rounds that morning, thinking the phone had ended up in the trash. It was either switched off or damaged at around 8am, but unfortunately it was never found. It was also established that in the area in which Corey was last seen walking into was a coldy sack containing multiple wheelie bins. Because CCTV footage never captured Corey leaving the horseshoe, police thought Corey may have fallen asleep in one of the bins and become trapped when a bin lorry picked it up the next morning. This would explain the faster movement of his mobile phone, but would also lead investigators to believe Corey had then been subsequently killed by either the garbage compactor or landfill incinerator. For months on end, police scoured railroads, lorry routes, and even spent millions of pounds searching landfills. They never found any DNA evidence or partial remains of Corey or his phone. However, authorities say that it would be almost impossible to pinpoint such evidence in landfills, contaminated with other human DNA and vast amounts of rubbish. But the lorry landfill death is the popular hypothesis of most researchers. Corey's family has its doubts, however. It's important to note that the CCTV cameras at the last sighting of Corey turned off at noon the day of the disappearance and were never checked for the night's footage before it expired. Thus, Corey could have fallen asleep in the cul-de-sac and left the next afternoon. In fact, one of the people seen leaving the area on CCTV footage in the late morning was wearing coloured shorts that were similar to ones that Corey had worn earlier on his final day. Other theories suggest there was a third party involved in Corey's disappearance, possibly picking up in his stupper and taking him who knows where. It might sound strange for a military man to be kidnapped, but there were some parallels to an attempted kidnapping at the nearby RAF Marham base in July. Everyone involved with the case decided that Corey would not have voluntarily went AWOL, and he was in good mental standing with his girlfriend, his friends, and the fact that his bank account and social media accounts were never changed after his disappearance. However, police won't rule out the possibility he got into a stranger's car that morning for a ride, and ended up with the wrong people at the wrong time. In the end, it's impossible to confirm what exactly happened to Corey McKeague. While the landfill theory makes sense, it's crazy to think, with all of the money and manpower involved, not a single speck of DNA was recovered. Corey truly vanished without a trace, and hopefully someday, something will come out that will lead us to a definitive answer. The Disappearance of Logal Schindelman Logal Schindelman seemed like an average teenage adult. He performed well throughout school, played football for a year at Washington State University, and kept himself out of trouble. However, Logan's life was anything but normal. His father, a Saudi Arabian native, met his mother during a business trip to the Pacific Northwest. They had a short romantic fling, but his father knew he couldn't reroute his life and went back home to the Middle East. Logan's mother, unwilling to sacrifice her education to be a full-time mum, let Logan's grandmother adopt both he and his half-sister so she could attend college in Seattle and start a new life. So Logan grew up with his grandmother, but always felt uneasy about his parents' background and experienced an identity crisis when he hit puberty at a young age. After discovering college wasn't right for him, Logan moved back in with his grandmother and worked odd jobs around Tumwater, Washington, before leaving for work on Friday morning of May the 19th, 2016. 19 year old Logan had a peculiar conversation with his grandmother. He talked about how he was at a crossroad in his life, unsure of his passions and nervous about something. His grandmother mentioned her grandson was unusually confident in his actions, but that morning seemed like he was on a mission and that he had an epiphany. Avoiding any details, his grandmother said their conversation would continue that evening after both of them returned from work. However, that conversation never happened, as Logan failed to return from work and hasn't been seen since. When Logan never came home on the evening of the 19th, his grandmother tracked his phone and saw the last ping was located around Olympia, 
so she assumed Logan was just visiting his mother. But when Saturday morning came, and Logan was still nowhere to be found, she attempted to report him missing to the police. Unfortunately, the small police department in Tumwater was closed for the weekend, and she had to wait until Monday morning. The police then underwent an investigation, and discovered some bewildering evidence that occurred over the weekend. It was soon revealed that while the missing person report was filed on the 23rd, Logan's black 1996 Chrysler Sebring had been impounded on May the 20th without notice, the day after his initial disappearance. Upon investigation, police reported that the car had been found parked at mile marker 91 along Interstate 5 southbound, between Logan's hometown of Tumwater and Maytown. Inside the car were groceries, Logan's cell phone, and his wallet full of cash and credit cards. Eyewitness reports placed Logan near to where his car was found throughout the day on the 20th. One woman claims she saw Logan with two Caucasian men standing outside of the Sebring, parked off the road at exit 95. The same woman then says she saw the car in the same spot on her way home, this time with the hood popped and completely void of passengers. The first of the two strange men was described as having shoulder length blonde hair and a flannel shirt. The second was about six feet tall, sporting a blonde bowl cut, a tank top, and jean shorts that were too small. The police were able to compose a sketch of the second suspect, and the result is quite unsettling. Other sightings of Logan's car place it back at mile marker 91, where it was eventually found, including one truck driver's report that the car swerved across the entire highway with no one in the driver's seat. But when it veered off on the curb, the truck driver saw a man with red or brown hair jump out of the car and run off into the woods. Search and rescue combed through the woods surrounding these areas of the highway, but found no shred of evidence. Overall, there were very few leads in the case. Logan had a tense relationship with his sister's ex-boyfriend, but he was ruled out after passing a polygraph test. He had no other well-known friends or enemies, but his unstable emotional and mental state suggested that he may have left on his own accord. The biggest pushback to this theory, however, was that Logan had left both his cell phone and money in his car, leaving himself without communication. Another possibility is Logan ran off to be with his mother, where Logan's grandmother had last tracked his cell phone on the night of the 19th. In addition, Logan's personal Facebook page was last updated on May the 27th, a week after his disappearance, with a check-in at Olympia Regional Airport. How he accessed Facebook, or if it was Logan himself, is still unknown. As of 2018, there are no new updates or leads in the investigation. However, the two men seen with Logan are still very much considered as the prime suspects. So if anyone in the Pacific Northwest area has any information regarding the police sketch of man number two, then please reach out to the proper authorities. The Disappearance of Ying Ying Zhang On a normal summer afternoon in June of 2017, Chinese Academy of Sciences scholar Ying Ying Zhang attempted to board a transit bus in Ubana, Illinois to travel to an off-campus apartment complex and sign a new lease. She texted a real estate agent at 1.39pm, saying that she would be late, arriving around 10 past 2pm. She got off the bus at 1.52pm to board her connecting shuttle, but was unable to board as she was on the wrong side of the street. Zhang then walked a couple of blocks to another bus stop right outside of a broadcast studio. It was here at 2pm that CCTV footage captured a black Saturn Astra passed by Zhang, only to turn around a few minutes later and pull up alongside the curb where she was standing at 2.03 p.m. After a moment of undecipherable conversation, Zhang gets in the vehicle and it drives away. It appears on one more security camera and disappears. To date, it's the last known sighting of Ying Ying Zhang. At around 2.38 p.m., the real estate agent messaged Zhang regarding their meeting and never received a reply. Zhang's roommate, aware of her errands that day, began to worry, and at 9.24pm that evening, alerted a college professor who filed an official missing persons report. Authorities were quick to study the CCTV footage from that day, and tracked 18 similar Saturn Astras registered in the area. One of those matched was linked to Brendan Allen Christensen, a former PhD student at the university, and owner of a Saturn Astra with a sunroof and cracked hubcap matching those featured in the CCTV footage. 
Christensen was questioned, but claimed he didn't remember his actions during the time of Zhang's disappearance, saying he was probably home asleep or playing video games. A few days after the initial interview, forensics inspected Christensen's car and found the passenger side appeared to have been cleaned to a more diligent extent than the other vehicle doors. This led to a second interview, where Christensen admitted that he had given an anonymous Asian woman a ride, but it was cut short when he accidentally took a wrong turn and the woman had panicked, requesting to get out. After this confession, officials arrested Christensen and seized all of his personal items, including phones and computers. The police then found internet history on his cell phone, leading to the sexual fetish website FetLife, including a forum entitled Abduction 101. Authorities also claimed they had audio recordings of Christensen saying he had brought Zing back to his apartment against her will, and that she had resisted the kidnapping and attempted to fight back. Where these audio recordings came from, or what he exactly said is unknown, and haven't been released to the public. However, it was enough for police to charge Christensen with kidnapping Zhang, and it was theorised she was no longer alive. Presently, Christensen's trial has been delayed through long court processes, and no new information has arisen regarding the location, or official announcement of Zhang's fate. Zhang's family stays hopeful that she could still be alive, but with Christensen's continued plea of innocence, her whereabouts remain a mystery. It's quite possible that when an official hearing takes place and the total bank of evidence against Christensen is revealed, an answer will be given. But until then, the search for Zhang continues. The Disappearance of Tammy Kingery This last case is quite perplexing, so listen closely. Tammy Kingery lived a normal life in Edgefield County, South Carolina, with her husband, Park, and their three children. She was a veteran nurse at a local nursing home and had a close circle of friends, but not all was what it seemed. According to associates of Tammy, her relationship with Park was quite strained, resulting in extramarital affairs and episodes of severe depression, including multiple attempts at suicide. The days leading up to the incident were especially tough on Tammy, as she complained of physical pain and insomnia and missed several days of work, which was out of character for her. Tammy's two sisters, part of her close friend group, encouraged her to see a doctor, so she scheduled an appointment for September the 21st, 2014. Unfortunately, the appointment never came to fruition. On 7am on September the 20th, Tammy left to work as normal. When she arrived, her co-workers noticed that she was agitated about something. Her voice was raised, and she kept checking her blood pressure. Her peers finally convinced her to seek help, and she called her husband to pick her up. He took her home, leaving her car at work, and she immediately went to bed. Park then left her in bed and left the house at 10am with their two sons to run some errands. Their daughter was still at a friend's house from the night before. This was the last time Tammy was seen. When Park and the boys returned home, they found the family dog outside and all the doors locked. When they went inside, the family found a handwritten note from Tammy, reading, Gone for a walk, be back soon, love you. Park knew something was wrong immediately and figured Tammy walked back to the hospital to get her car. He then drove the route she would have taken but found nothing. Park called his daughter and had her and her friend look about the town and recruited his sons and mother-in-law to check the thick woods surrounding their home. At 2pm, when nothing had been found, the police were called and a massive search went underway. Police were unable to find anything unusual in the Kingery residence, besides the fact that Tammy left her phone, wallet, purse and keys behind. This baffled experts, as all the doors could only be locked from the outside. It also muddled the idea that Tammy left on her own accord, seeing as though she wouldn't have been able to drive, call for help or spend money. Police dogs were also unable to catch Tammy's scent in the surrounding woods, further expanding the mystery. When authorities checked her phone, they found two different anonymous males engaging in romantic conversation. However, both were investigated and cleared. There are a couple of unanswered clues surrounding the disappearance, the first of which is an old abandoned shack found in the nearby woods, where volunteer searchers found sponges, gloves, and a plastic bag containing a dead dog. Police again ruled out the shack had any connection to Tammy, but the volunteers weren't as convinced. They claimed whoever buried the dog went to a lot of trouble for such a simple task. 
and theorized that it hinted at possibly dangerous people living near the Kingery residence, which was in a secluded area of Edgefield. The police were unable to do a more in-depth investigation of the woods due to the hunting season making the woods unsafe. The second clue was the Kingery family's love of motorcycles, including Tammy's own fascination. Her daughter claimed to have seen someone similar in appearance to her mother riding on the back of a motorcycle. She witnessed this after she and her friends went searching for Tammy shortly after her father called. The Kingery's neighbour also claimed to have heard a loud engine roar to life and leave the vicinity of the residence's driveway, between the time Park and his sons left and returned from their errands. However, neither claim resulted in any viable evidence. With all things considered, police still only have theories in relation to the case, but have hinted they suspect foul play. Park Kingery was investigated multiple times but was cleared, after cell phone pings and CCTV footage proved his alibi correct between the hours of 7am and Tammy's initial disappearance. Park himself assumes Tammy was abducted due to the state of the house and her belongings left behind. Others assume Tammy left to end her own life, as she had tried various times before, which would explain the note on the table. However, all wooded areas, hiking trails, and bodies of water near Edgefield County were combed, and not a shred of DNA or evidence was found. With the note, the motorcycle claims, the locked doors, and the wooden shack in the brush, nothing can be ruled out. It's truly one of the most bizarre and mysterious missing persons accounts we've ever seen and we're all hoping investigators will someday uncover a lead that will clear up the fate of Tammy Kingery. So that's five incredibly strange modern missing person cases. If you found this video interesting, then you're going to enjoy our new Cold Case Detective series, where we will be discussing unsolved crimes and cold cases in depth. We aim to raise massive amounts of awareness for some of the most bizarre missing person cases in the world, and for those that are still active, we hope that our team and the community can help in any way to potentially solve them. Check out the trailer for our upcoming series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.